Hello, here we are once again on Kathy's Perspective, the groundbreaking and heartfelt new podumentary series hosted by the one and only Catherine Batsis. If our last outing was any indication, we are going to be in for a real treat today because we're going to be discussing Kathy's as yet unreleased book. And boy, oh boy, have I been waiting for this. We have Kathy on the line right now, ready to roll. Hi there, Kathy. How are you today? I'm doing very well and looking forward to this documentary very much. Excellent. Well, you and me both. I couldn't be more excited. So I want to jump right in. We've got a lot to talk about. During the first episode of Kathy's Perspective, of this podumentary, we discussed your first book, Dr. Andrew Batsis, Husband, Dentist, Kiwanian, Santa Claus, very extensively. Now, I think people probably imagined that your second book would be a continuation of memoirs, but it's not that at all. You're going to surprise some fans with this next one titled Grateful and Blessed. Now, I want to hear about it in your own words. Tell me about it. What is Grateful and Blessed? Well, it's a book of poetry. Uh, On February, I believe it was the 23rd, 2022, we had a, a blizzard here, and so I wasn't leaving the room to go anywhere. And I had been given information about a poetry contest. So I took a look at my notes that I had for Grateful and Blessed, and I thought it would be a great idea to use poetry to describe and express what I'm grateful for and why I feel blessed. Wow. So the first thing that I knew was family, and I was born into a loving family. Right. So that was the sentence. And on the last sentence of each stanza, I wrote, and I am grateful and blessed. And is that through the entire book, through in every poem? Every poem. Wow. It's kind of like a refrain or a chorus. Right, right. Oh, that's amazing. So clever, so clever. I, you know, being such a fan of your first book, I knew that if you were going to be straying from the genre of the first book, it was going to have to be for something really, really special. And I know that this is. Um, and you faced a lot of hurdles, though, getting out that first book. Is this one presenting you with similar challenges? Yes, I have two publishing companies that are talking to me about offering me a contract Mm -hmm. and I have to uh, see which one will be right for me, whether they have all the things I want in a publisher. One thing I didn't have with my former publisher was um, the Library of Congress information. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, in one of the publishers, they do mention that if it's appropriate, they do have Library of Congress information for that book. Okay. So yeah. I've got a lot to think about and yes, get over like before it. it comes a book. So what made you choose poetry over prose? Because it came to me. Rhyming words came to me. I would sit there and make a list of words that rhymed with time, so to speak, Mm. and see if there's something there that I could put in uh, about time. And um, I I just, I, I found it to be not only challenging, but also satisfying that I was able to come out with something in poetry form. Amazing. Now, unlike your debut book, which I've read cover to cover probably a dozen times, I have yet to get my hands on a copy of Grateful and Blessed because it's not released yet, and my advanced manuscript must be lost in the mail. (laughs) (laughs) But without a frame of reference, uh, both I and the audience are completely in the dark and in your hands. So um, would would you please recite to us 
one of the highlights of this collection? Well, Cousin Nicole said that recreation is her favorite one. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Um, Sounds good. I think maybe you'll enjoy it too. It has to do with uh, my uh, childhood and, and then as I grew older and all. Oh, great. So, my good childhood friend and I got along as well as ice cream and pie. We played marbles, jump rope, and hopscotch games. Ignored the people who called us names. And I am grateful and blessed. With neighborhood tots to teens, we played hide and seek. They ran from the catalpa tree as a lightning speak. Went into hiding with a possible peak as long as the weather was dry that week and i am grateful and blessed when young i roller skated with my friend who lived directly across a dead end street we attached the wheels on our sturdy shoes and proceeded to roll outdoors like we drank some booze and i am grateful and blessed when married, I roller skated indoors on a rink, wearing safer roller skate boots with Ed Zink. On roller skates, we waltzed. And as we danced, one time Ed tripped and fell, did not tear his pants. And I am grateful and blessed. In my teens, I skated on outdoor ice, wearing hockey skates that were hand-me-downs twice. Then my parents bought me new figure skates. I was so pleased, I searched for a skating mate, while mother thought to make me best dressed. And I am grateful and blessed. I enjoyed Candleton bowling with small, smooth balls. I hoped my strength and form would make the pins fall. Time for pizza. I ate two slices. I had gall. She sure likes pizza, the southern vendor draws, and I am grateful and blessed. My skiing career was extremely short. One day, after I constructed a snow fort, I went into the garage, took down the skis from the wall, placed my feet into the cross, ski boots and all. The trouble was, I couldn't move the skis. So, I took them off replaced them on the wall and went into the house before I would freeze and I am grateful and blessed. I learned to swim at Walden Pond. For swimming, I became quite fond or I'm going to change that to for swimming, I became quite a swan. I haven't made a decision on that yet. This program was sponsored by the town. From the wharf, we learned to dive down. And I am grateful and blessed. One afternoon, I directed a play, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Mother invited the neighbors, placed five chairs, and provided Greek refreshments that day and I am grateful and blessed. The family played outdoor games in their backyard. Light badminton rackets, extra shuttlecocks, and a six foot net were in the box. All items were inventoried by this bard. And I am grateful and blessed. Croquet was played in the backyard also. We used wickets, mallets, and wooden balls. We were careful so we would not have falls. 
I remember playing with my caring bowl, and I am grateful and blessed. Horseshoes is a game using two metal stakes. The path between the stakes is long. In throwing the shoe, one needs to be strong. To celebrate a ringer, eat cupcakes. And I am grateful and blessed. When chewing bubble gum, I blow big bubbles. Sometimes they'd break and I'd have troubles. Chewing gum made me hungry, so I eat a candy bar. Milky Way, Mars bar, Tootsie Roll, or a Clark bar. And I am grateful and blessed. And that's the end of recreation. Wow, that was fantastic. I just love how you how you're able to play with language the way you do. It's it's really just so special. And in a way, it it also echoes your prose, the way that you write prose. I, I can see that there's a great um, crossover there. That you can tell that they're related. Maybe it's just through the, the sheer quality of writing, I'm not sure, but you can really tell. And it's just wonderful. So obviously you have a masterful control over the English language. Now, personally, being a fan of our actual New England seasons, literally the seasons in New England, I can't resist asking to hear the poem of the same name, Our New England Seasons. Um, that one really jumped out at me when I saw the, the, the list of poems that are included in the book. And before you read it, I'd like to hear a little bit of background about that one as well. one of my uh, earliest ones, I had done family for a poetry contest, and uh, I liked it even though I didn't get into the finals, I still liked my poem better than some of the ones that got into the finals. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I was thinking, what do I have that I can share? And besides, I have a family, and most people have a family. Mm -hmm. um, I thought maybe the, the New England seasons. And I had a few things to say, not a lot, but enough to uh, make a poem out. Sure. So it starts out, spring begins in the middle of March. Now that's not true. It's really March 22nd or 21st. Right. And that's not really the middle, but anyway. Middle end. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it that way anyway. So yeah. New England spring begins in the middle of March. In the Greek Independence Day parade, we march. April showers refresh the air and land while May blooms burst up through the sand, and I am grateful and blessed. Summer begins in the middle of June, when one may hear a flag day tune. July is a month for celebration to remember the birth of our nation, and I am grateful and blessed. August is hot and usually dry. Do you and yours ever wonder why? In September, we celebrate Labor Day, and for me, there's Mother's Birthday, and I am grateful and blessed. Autumn begins in the middle of September and ends in the middle of December. In autumn, there may be Indian summer. If not, that autumn is a bummer. With colored leaves, autumn may be dressed, and I am grateful and blessed. Winter begins in the middle of December. Numerous days to remember. There's Boxing Day, Christmas, and Hanukkah. Saturnalia, Winter Solstice, and Kwanzaa. And I am grateful and blessed. Snow cascades over the land in January. 
February and March. It falls heavy and sticky or light and tickly, nestling on your nose, making snowballs for sculptures as one grows. And I am grateful and blessed. And that's it. It's very short. Oh, that's nice. I like that. That was really good. Now, there's a poem in the book called My Husband Andy. And I can't, oh, yeah. I can't help but wonder about this one, given the shared subject matter that it has with your first book. Um, maybe you could share that one with, with us. I'd love to. Great. My Husband Andy. We met February 9th, 1964, at a Greek-American folk dance. We waltzed and talked in a formal stance. He wrote my info in his black book, That Is No More, and I am grateful and blessed. Our courtship was longer than we planned. He bought me an engagement ring and he knew my heart would sing when he placed the ring on my hand. And I am grateful and blessed. We married in a Greek Orthodox church. That day, Andy stopped his search looking for a suitable wife. We were blessed to have a wonderful life. And I am grateful and blessed. We lived in Montclair, NJ, for three years. I worked at the Hillside Grammar School, the NJ College of Medicine and Dentistry was Andy's school, where he studied and worked with his peers. And I am grateful and blessed. Our Montclair years were satisfactory. Andy graduated from that College of Medicine and Dentistry. He internshiped at Mountainside Hospital. He was my hero, and I was his doll. And I am grateful and blessed. To Tom's River, New Jersey, we moved. The dental office bank loan was approved. Andy's sister gave us a puppy. To fence the backyard was paid by Andy, and I am grateful and blessed. Andy got himself a Lincoln Town Car. I got a blue Swedish Volvo as I had many places to go, such as to work at school that was not far, and I am grateful and blessed. Andy's dental practice thrived. With all his patients, he strives to make them comfortable and trusting, with no fear, no hurting, and no fussing. And I am grateful and blessed. Since Andy's dental practice expanded, he hired a receptionist and an assistant. He gave trinkets to children instead of candy and Halloween toothbrushes, thanks to Mrs. B. And I am grateful and blessed. In the spring of 1971, Andy joined the Tom's River Kiwanis Club. He participated willingly. Thus, he found himself in the Kiwanis Hub. And I am grateful and blessed. Andy's first assignment was key club advisor. He was time generous and not a miser. He guided the high school youth well. He did not yell nor put them under a spell. And I am grateful and blessed. Later, Andy was elected vice president he also joined the membership committee. His committee work became a precedent for others to replicate confidently. And I am grateful and blessed. 
As club president, he earned many awards. Kalanians began listening to his words. Later, he was appointed lieutenant governor of Division 6, but advised outside the barrier. And I am grateful and blessed. He campaigned successfully to become NJ District Governor, and for some, Kalonians, he became their hero, as he was generous with his time and dough. On July 10, 1996, Andy received the Key of Honor Award and Book at 55 years old. In the youth he believed, he accepted this honor with a happy look, and I am grateful and blessed. Looking back, I was lucky in love. Andy and I were peaceful, like a dove. Speaking the truth kept us calm. Expressing our feelings brought no harm, and I am grateful and blessed.